So if you have seen the previous video, which was a detailed video of how you can create your own paper file animations, you might have seen this little section right here in which we have our friend Ryan Reynolds winking at the camera. So in this video, we're going to be building that and it's actually not that complicated. So make sure to watch the whole video so that you can know how to use the grid warp node in Fusion to create some interesting animations. So the first thing that we're going to need is our image. In this case, these PNG that I have found from Pexels.com. Also in this video, I've increased the UI scale to 150%. So let me know if that is actually easier to watch so that you can follow along if you're watching from your phone, for example, because I've had some people in the past tell me that it was a little bit hard to follow because the screen was a little bit too small to be able to really see what was happening. So how do we create this winking animation? So we have the picture here, of Ryan, and we're going to open this in Fusion. And the thing that I'm going to do already is I'm going to just grab the mask. So this polygon mask was actually from the previous, from the actual example that you saw. I'm just copying and pasting it here because I don't want to have to build that whole thing from scratch again. Although it's just a little rectangle, so it's not a big deal. And there we have that separated from everything else. Now, the next thing we want is to press Ctrl and Spacebar and add a grid warp effect. Now we're going to change the magnet type to selected. And then we're going to have to change the grid size to 100 in both cases. In this case, it just ended up working perfectly by having it 100, which is the max. And it created this area around Ryan's eye, which just was perfect for the use case that we're trying to do. And this actually works for pretty much anything that you want to do, right? Now, if you want to go 50 on another case, you can do that too. It all really depends on the size of your initial image. If I made this bigger with the transform node, then we could use a smaller number here. But in this case, 100 worked. So we're going to do that. Now, the next step is to create a keyframe. So we're going to do a keyframe here at frame 15. Click here and then we're going to go. We're going to go eight frames forward. So 23. And now we're going to bring these down like that so that everything is moved a little bit. And we're, we can actually adjust these handles right here so that the image moves a little bit less drastic or less dramatic. So we're going to do that until we get the eye to be almost so that it looks like it's completely close. And so this last part right here so that it looks like that. OK, now it looks like it's winking, but it's a, it's a little bit weird because there's still this little white thing, but it's not a big deal for the tutorial purposes. Then we're just going to go a few frames forward in this case. Uh, we wanted the initial one wing to close the eye faster and then leave a little bit slower. So we're going to go to frame 35. That'll be 13 or 12 frames. And then we're going to press these R right here. And that's going to bring this back to normal. If we press play right here, we can see that winking is already happening. And if you want to adjust anything, just go to that middle keyframe and then we can just bring things a little bit closer so that it looks a little bit better like that. Then what you want to do is make sure to go to the spline tool and then selecting everything. If you press S, the curvature is not going to be as impactful. So I would recommend that you press F and then we can press T so that we can adjust the ease in and out values and then have this be a little bit more impactful. So if we press play right now with that on, looks all right and it's not doesn't look that perfect yet because we can still see a little bit of the white part of the eye but you get the concept now let's go back to the edit page and the last part would be actually to just use the zoom or the transform controls and put these whatever you want it to be and then the last part would be to use a sound effect so that the effect is a little bit more interesting. Now, one other thing that I did here on the initial one is that I used this S shape or the S start and then I had a S render and then a glow effect. Now for the S star, what I did was I animated right after the wing happens. You can see how it becomes bigger and then disappeared, sort of like the bubble effect. But this is how that works. Just use the border width and the width. I've connected the height by right clicking here and create an expression Then just do that. And that will connect this so that they both will have the same values. And then on the first keyframe, there'll be zero. The star will become bigger 
but the border will become zero or smaller and that is what gives us this effect of the star disappearing like that. Now one last thing that you would want to do is to add some sound effects. In this case we have this cartoon wink sparkle that I think I got from Pixabay which is a free sound effects library so just make sure to check that out and that is how it sounds. Now you have to do is find the exact point where the winking is happening. Let me press N so that I can move this a little bit more easily right here. And then we set the sound effect right there. And then you're done. If you have followed all of these simple steps, then you should be able to use the grid warp node to create some interesting animations. If you have any cool ideas or want to share some of the things that you have done, just put them on down in the comments so that we can all check them out and get inspired by your creative endeavors or your creative experiments. So yeah, I've always tried to think of ways of using these, although it's a little bit more complicated because when you want to do something, it drags something else, right? As you can see when we move meshes around. But yeah, so there's probably a lot of cool, interesting things that can be created with the grid warp, but we still have to explore and try things out to keep learning and getting better at things.